Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from ChichiCheckIt.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Okay, so I admit, today is not Tuesday, it's actually Wednesday. Uh, we decided to delay today's or this week's tutorial by one day because 9-11 just happened to fall on a Tuesday. So we just dedicated that day to, um, so just solely to 9-11. We released a 9-11 tribute. And so, I don't know, it's just a sad day for America in general, and we only wanted to release the one video just dedicated to that. So, I apologize if you don't like that we decided to delay it, but it's our channel, so you can suck it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, it's our channel. Let us do what we want. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, uh, today what we're going over is how to take a video clip and convert it into a GIF animation, alright? And before I get into the tutorial, I do want to mention that the the video that I'm using as an example is a little suggestive. So if you're uh, if you don't really know about sex and all that just yet, then you might not want to watch the tutorial because I don't know someone would probably get upset about that. But you're on the internet, so you're probably already educated on all that crap. So what the crap do I care? I'm just trying to not get sued here, huh? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, the clip that I decided to use is, um, like I said, it's a little suggestive for those of you that are underage and all that, but the rest of you won't care. I'm basically just humping yeah. the air because I thought it'd be kind of funny. Well, actually, Eli thought it'd be funny, and I just kind of went along with it. And admittedly, it's really embarrassing, but what the heck, it's funny. So this is the clip that I decided to use, even though we took like five different clips. And uh, the first thing that we want to do, since I know what clip that I want to use, is cut it down using Sony Vegas into a clip that I know that I want to use as my GIF animation. Now, if you don't have Sony Vegas, then you might want to use, like, I don't know, Windows Movie Maker or Camtasia, whatever, or whatever you got on Macs like iMovie. Either way, just choose a program that you know that you want to use as the clip for your GIF animation, all right? So let's open up Sony Vegas. And automatically, I have Sony Vegas set up to make a 1080p document. So as you can see right here in the project settings, it says 1920 by 1080. And honestly, GIFs aren't 1080p normally. So I'm going to go to File, and we'll go to Properties, and I'll just size this down to 1280 by 720 for the time being. We can size this down even more in Photoshop if we so choose, but I'm just going to call that good for the time being, all right? So let's go grab our clip and we'll just click and drag this right into Sony Vegas here. And we really do not need the audio, so I'm going to select the audio track and delete that by hitting, oop, I selected the entire clip. Let's just select the audio track and then delete it with the delete key. And so that'll get rid of it for you. And then I'm going to click and drag on this, uh, this little slider here to the point where I want to start my cut for the GIF. So I really like the part where I stick out my tongue, so right around there. And let me zoom in on this so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, if you look closely, I'll just kind of zoom in using my scroll wheel on the timeline. If I were to pan forward, this is where I start my hump for the first time after I have my tongue out. So I'll start it at about uh, 9.09 on the timeline, and I'll split that by hitting the letter S because that's where I want my GIF to start. And I'll just select that previous clip and delete it by hitting the delete key. And when I go forward a few frames, I you can see that I perform an entire you know full hump before the the video ends. But I want this GIF to be a a perfect loop. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to cut it when it when I reach the top of the or the end of the first hump. So that's right around here. So I'll split that and I'll delete that ending clip. And then what I would have to do is copy this clip, reverse it, and put it on the end so that way it goes forward to the end of the hump and then goes backwards to the beginning of the hump. So it'll go forward, backward, forward, backward throughout the entire GIF. So I hope that makes sense. It's a little hard to explain, but it's a pretty easy concept. So uh, before I do the whole copy and paste thing, I'm going to click and drag this clip to the very beginning of the, uh, the timeline over here. And then I want to zoom in on this so that there's not so much headroom. So to do that, if you look on the, uh, the end of the clip here, there's a little box. And if you hover over that, it says event pan slash crop. And if you give that a click, this little menu will pop up with a way to zoom in on the clip. So to do this, we'll just click and drag on one of these corners. And so that way it zooms in a little bit. 
and then I'll use my arrow keys to nudge it down and to the left. So we'll put it down in this, uh, this corner over here. And then I'll drag this out of the way so we can see how it looks in the actual preview here. So I might want to actually put this more a little more uh, right over here so that way I'm, a, I'm more centered on the overall, the overall video here. So once we've got this in a good spot, let's go ahead and exit out of this. So one thing I've noticed is that this video is lacking a serious amount of contrast. It's just way overblown, and uh, I guess it's just something that Eli missed. I don't really blame him. It's, it's really hard to tell uh, the overall brightness on a video when you're outside, but we need to fix this up. So in order to add some brightness and contrast to this, we're going to go to this little icon, which is the track effects, and it's one icon to the left of this star-looking shape, or maybe it looks like a sun. I don't know. So one to the left of that, click the track effects, and we're going to double click the Sony brightness and contrast, and then we'll hit OK. And so we'll move this off to the side so we can see what's going on. And if we were to amp up the contrast, you'd notice that everything else gets really, really bright. So to uh, counter that, we're going to put the contrast center all the way up, and then we can mess with the contrast even more. So let's not get too much on it. So there we go. So I have the contrast at 0.453 and the contrast center all the way at 1. So if you do a little before and after, you'll see that we've got something that looks a lot better. Now if you want to, you can add some more onto this. Like maybe you can go add in and add like a, what was it called? It was like a burst or sun ray or maybe, was, there you go. Sony rays makes a, an interesting little effect on there. Uh, but of course, you'd have to mess with the, the threshold and put down the amount. And I know, you could get a pretty cool effect like that, but I don't know, that's totally optional. Just something I kind of came across. And so let's go ahead and copy this clip by hitting Control-C, and then we'll go to the end of it and paste it with Control-V. And then we'll right-click this uh, duplicated copy here and click Reverse. And so now, if you were to pan through, it should hump up and then go down. So up, down, up, down, up, down. Beautiful, perfect loop. Now if you want to actually preview this in a better way, just uh, double click beneath the two clips to highlight them and then toggle the loop playback by clicking on this, um, this little swirly arrow that you see down here. And then if you push the space bar, you'll get a nice little preview of what your video should look like. So there we go, we've got this perfectly looping video going on here, so let's render it to something that Photoshop can recognize and import into frames. So we'll go to File, oops, we'll go to File, Render As, and uh, we're going to choose a video for Windows, so an AVI file. We'll open up this little uh, sub-list of render formats, and let's choose HD 720-60p. And we'll customize that template, and we'll change the frame rate to 29.97. Now, I do realize that since this is a GIF animation, it should have a, uh, a smaller frame rate and a smaller frame size, but I really don't care. This is solely for demonstration purposes, and I'm not putting this anywhere, so I'm just going to keep it at the full 30 frames per second. And so let's go to the audio and turn off the include audio because we really do not need it. And we'll go to the project settings and we'll change the video rendering quality to best. Okay. So with all that, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we'll click the browse button. And just kind of go to a place where you know you can find it later. So I would just put it, um, and where did I put it? Video to GIF. And I've already got a clip called Humpy Hump. <laughs> so I'll just uh, overwrite that. And yes, I know, I'm overwriting it. Render, yes, overwrite it. And it should render pretty fast because it's a really short clip. And so now we'll do all of the next stuff in Photoshop. So the process of importing the video into Photoshop is actually really easy to do. We'll just go to File, then we'll go down to Import, and we'll click Video Frames to Layers. And then we'll just choose our Humpy Hump. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Humpy Hump. My goodness. I will choose the Humpy Hump video and we'll click Open. And we'll choose from beginning to end, and we'll make this a frame animation, and we'll click OK. And that will automatically import it into our little timeline down here. So I'll open up the timeline. And also, if you don't have this timeline at the bottom already, just go to Window and click Timeline here at the bottom. 
And now we'll open up this little timeline dealio for you. And you'll see that we have a layer for every single frame that it imported for us. And since it was a really short clip, it was, it's only like 12 frames. So it's, this is actually pretty nice. And I want to go ahead and add some text into this. So I'll select the first frame and I'll grab my text tool by hitting the letter T. And I'm going to click somewhere in the lower middle hand area, kind of where my crotch is. <laughs> and let's just uh, put in the words uh, pelvic thrust. And I have this set to center align, but that's really not all that important. So once you have that typed out, we'll hit the check mark at the top there. And I'll go back to my move tool and I'll uh, hit the command control A or command A if you're on a Mac. And then I'll click this, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, this fifth icon up here to center it vertically on the entire document. And now I'll hit control D to deselect or command D if you're on a Mac. And then I'm going to resize the text by hitting control T or command T again if you're on a Mac. And I'll click and drag from one of these corners outwards while holding alt and shift or option and shift. And I'll just make this a size that seems like it fits the size of the document here. And I'll drag it on downwards while holding shift. There we go. And this text is obviously really hard to see because I've got a really white background. So to fix that, um, let's actually go ahead and hit the check mark so that we're uh, confirming that transformation. And I'll put the pelvic thrust layer on the very top over here. And so with the pelvic thrust layer selected, uh, let's go to the effects and add a stroke. And as for the size of the stroke, you can do whatever you want. Um, five is a pretty decent number, I suppose. You can even go up to maybe like eight. But I don't know, maybe that's a little too much. So we'll go back down to five and just call that good, and we'll hit OK. And so now if you go and click through the rest of these frames, you'll notice that the problem with Photoshop is that when you add in this text, it doesn't automatically keep the effects the same through the entire thing. I guess I guess it could be a good thing in one way or another, but to keep this throughout the entire document or the entire timeline, I should say, uh, we're going to go over here above the uh, the layers and all that, and you'll see these three icons that have chain links on them. And if you click on the one that says effects with the chain link on it, you'll get this message that says make the layer style in other frames, blah 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 blah, and just just click match, okay? And you should see that if you click through the frames that stroke should be there through the rest of the frames. Now, of course, we don't want this to be, um, well, personally, I don't want this to be through the entire video. I kind of want this to flash every so often. So I'm going to go to the first frame, and I'll turn off the eye icon to turn off the pelvic thrust. Then I'll go to the second frame, and then that'll also be turned off there. And then third frame, I'll turn it back on. And it'll be there in the fourth frame. Let's do it. You know, let's just go from the fourth frame to the tenth frame. And we'll turn that on. There we go. That makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? <laughs> so we got all of those turned on. And then the eleventh and the twelfth frame, it's also turned off. Okay. So let's go ahead and click this little play icon at the bottom to let, just to kind of preview how this should look. Okay, so it's a little uh, laggy and delayed just because I'm recording. Um, usually it'll play through this at full speed, but whatever. You get the general idea. It plays through. I do my hump, and it's, it flashes the pelvic thrust text. This is, <laughs> this is hilarious in my personal opinion. This is just perfect. So I've officially decided that I'm ready to save this as a GIF animation. So let's go ahead and stop the playback. And let's go to File, and we'll do Save for Web. And the shortcut on that is Control-Alt-Shift-S. So just a little reminder for those of you out there. And make sure you're set to GIF rather than JPEG, PNG, or WBMP, whatever the fluff that is. And uh, the colors can be set to, to either 256 or to 128. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at 128 just because it makes the file size a little bit smaller. And also, this is a good time to change down the uh, the image size to something like 720 by 405 or something of the sort. So if you want to scale it down, now's a good time to do it. And of course, for the animation, make sure you have the looping options set to forever. And let's um, just go back to the first frame, make sure it looks pretty good. And beautiful, look at that. <laughs> Pelvic thrust. Absolutely amazing. <laughs>
All right, so let's also uh, toggle off the transparency so that way it's uh, one less thing for the GIF animation to think about. And uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and hit save. And let's name this pelvic dash thrust so that way it doesn't overwrite the previous one I made because I already, already like it. And we'll hit save. And let's go ahead and minimize this. And we should see pelvic dash thrust right here, 720 by 405, 714 kilobytes, absolutely teeny. So we'll double click this to open it up in uh, Google here. And you'll see that this thing works flawlessly. <laughs> oh my gosh, every time I see this, I laugh. I love it. So anyway, that is the overall process to making a GIF animation. So hopefully you guys learned something pretty good from this. Um, it's really easy to do and you know pretty quick to create and all that. So uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to let us know by liking and commenting. It's always appreciated when you guys do that for us. And if you have any suggestions for future tutorials and all that, just let me know. Leave a comment in the section below or just send me a message. And so, yep, that's about all I have for you guys for today. So uh, I'll just call it good for now, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Peace out.